Hello, my name is Daniel and today is my first ever extreme off-road triathlon. Let's go. Just how hard is an off-road triathlon? Well, there is only one way to find out. I've done a lot of road triathlon, but never an off-road one. How hard can it be? Xterra was born in Maui, Hawaii, but now it lives in Western Park in the UK. The race that I'm currently faffing around for is a 1,500 meter open water swim in a lake, a 27 kilometer off-road mountain bike ride, and then a 10 kilometer off-road run. I've got talc in my socks, Vaseline on my balls, let's get down there. So I feel pretty ready, bike's ready. I've got loads of kit that I've faffed through about 10 times. I'm just gonna get my bike in transition, have a look at the swim, have a look at what we can see from the bike and run course and get ready to go. We've got about an hour and a quarter to go, so plenty of time really, but I need to get that port loop queue. Just walk down to transition and get your bike right. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Oh no, not for me. The day started well, I went the wrong way before the race even started and crashed before I've even ridden the bike. Good start, Daniel. However, I got over those small, minor details, eventually got my bike in kit racked in transition and was ready to go. Okay, so just getting all set up in transition. I feel like I've forgotten some things. It's been a while since I've done this, but I think I'm there or thereabouts. Bike, helmet, trainer, socks, drink, a gel. That's about it for a transition for me. Just having a look at the swim in and bike out, just make sure that I know where to go. So uh, I don't know where to go yet, so I'm gonna do that now, but I can see the sign for bike out down there. So at least I know one of those things. I think run out is up here but taking the time in transition to familiarize myself with this sort of stuff is so helpful when you're in the heat of the moment in a race you don't think straight so you just go through this in a, in a dry run right so swim in from over there coming through this bottom end yeah. so I'm on the second row bike's facing that way bike out there all oh, right two lights back in I think it gets a bit row one out so the Porto, Porto Lou here is rather large, so we're walking down to the swim start where there's rumoured to be some more Porto Lou's and we can also have a look at the swim. Yeah. Not that I need to look at it, but it's a lake, you can see where the boys are. Also, I think the briefing is at the swim, so we might as well be down there anyway. Plan. Have you ever wondered what is even more awkward than a guy getting far too involved trying to eat a gel? I can tell you it is having somebody video you getting far too involved trying to eat a gel. That's Liz, by the way. She's my other half and my number one supporter, top support team, top bag holder, etc. Thank you for your support, Elizabeth. Just getting my last little bit of pre-race nutrition on board. So 40 grams of carbs about half an hour before the swim start. And to be honest, I need those carbs to get into my wetsuit. These things always shrink over winter. It always feel a little bit tighter in spring. I don't know whether it's just the fact that I've wintered well or whether it has genuinely shrunk over winter. But eventually, I got my body inside this damn thing and we were nearly ready to go. Liz likes what she's seen anyway. Okay, so we're at the swim start, ready to go. We've got the swim safety team to my left getting their brief. Thank you to those guys for keeping us safe today. Getting ready. Ready to rock and roll. I'm off at 10 o'clock, which is going to be about half an hour. Five minutes before me is the elite wave with Alistair Brownlee and co, so I will not be closing those down. Just had a quick look at the course. Looks great. Keep the swim boys to your left, I think. Look forward to getting in the water. It's about 15 degrees, the water temperature, allegedly. Um, I don't know if it'll be that warm in reality, but I'm going to get stuck in, give us everything I've got, and hopefully have a good day out. So let's go. Apparently, you can never have too much lube, so getting stuck into some more of that. Last little drink, I'm also getting a few chews down me, so these have got carbs and these have got caffeine in as well. Good little pre-race treat. Apparently Liz needed a pre-race treat as well because she got stuck into a couple of these. Not quite sure why, I'm sure she's well fueled for her supporting duties, so you're welcome Elizabeth. M more lube, what is wrong with me? So this is another pre-race ritual, putting some cold water down my wetsuit. It's not for pleasure, it's for comfort, it's for, when you get in the water, sometimes you feel like a bit of shock, the cold water when it's all over you, you can go into almost a state of shock and your breathing will become shallow and you can essentially panic a tight wetsuit on your chest, all adds into that feeling of shock. So I find this really helps me have that little bit of shock before I get in the water. It's quite awkward if I panic and drown in, in the water. It'd make a good video I'm sure, but I probably couldn't do it again. I'm also so just putting some water on my goggles and on my face to make sure they're similar temperature it prevents my goggles from steaming up let's get in the water and get gone 
So I'm in the water, you can see me, I'm the guy in the black wetsuit and a yellow cap, just doing a few swim drills there, just getting my head underwater, just doing some fast swimming so that I can get my heart rate up and just deal with all those nerves that you get when they say go. I'm essentially doing what is a race start two or three times before the start of the race so that when they actually say go, I am ready. And here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. There goes the start of the X Terror Race 2023 here at Western Park. Our sprint is underway. So the swim was carnage, but I was well prepared. I didn't panic. I didn't get too caught up in the kerfuffle in the corners. It's a good job I had some people to follow because we actually turned right and not left. I'd love to tell you this is me, but this is actually double Olympic champion Alistair Brownlee. He was easier to spot than I was because he was off the front and I was not. I had a good swim. I'm a land mammal, right? I'm much better on dry land than I am in the water. So I didn't by any means lead the swim out. I was about mid packing my wave, but here we can see Alistair Brownlee out the water and hot on his heels, triathlon Dan, 27 minutes, 1500 meters, that'll do, time to get on the bike, let's go. Well done, Daniel! Woohoo! Oh, indeed! <laughs> Woo! Well done, Daniel! Last little push now to the finish! Is this getting worse? Yeah. Thank goodness that bike ride is over. One hour and 37 minutes, one fall, two wrong turns, but a damn good time. It was difficult. I'm just so far out of my depth of this sort of thing. I'm not a natural off-road rider. I lose time on the technical sections. I lose time on the hills. I was losing time on the flat bits, but there you go. I gave it my all. I did everything I could. I feel like I was still roughly mid-pack. There weren't many position changes on the ride, to be honest. We were all pretty stretched out after the swim. Here I am just trying to wreck my massive bike on the rack that's always a little bit too low for my bike. And then I'm just helmet off. I've got the same shoes on that I'm going to be running in. This could have been a lot faster, if I'm honest. Just a bit of a faffer. And then then, do you remember when earlier I was saying, oh, okay, I'm looking at where, you know, where I'm going in transition, where I'm coming out, and then, oh, I'll look at that bit later about the run out. Well, I didn't actually, so I'm just trying to think about oh, which way is it. Mm, not sure. Is it that way? Oh, let's have a little bit of a drink. Shall I look at technical official? Is it going to be? Yeah, pointing me that way. Thank you very much. Cheers. Now I know where to go. Chuck the drink down that I should have took with me, but you live and learn, don't you? On to the run. Here we go. 10Ks to go. Daniel's set a new fashion trend today. Aero tri suit, trail shoes, bright orange helmet, whilst on a really old mountain bike. What do you think? <laughs> After a really cold start this morning, it's nice now that the sun is shining. Are you still pleased you went on the chain gang last night? <laughs> See you at the finish, well done. So of course, the cameras are only out on the easy parts of the run course. This course was tough, really tough in places. There was one hill we had to pull ourselves up with a rope, so that's more like tough mud than it is an actual run, but then plenty of it was like this. Gravel, grass, although it was quite leg sapping, it wasn't actually that difficult. Now, I often struggle with my digestion, and on this run, I was, oh, watch out that tree, Daniel. On this run, I was feeling like I might need to go number two. So I just controlled it a little bit for fear of putting one Myself and didn't really take on any food or anything. I just wanted just to run it round 
not put myself in too much of a hole and just try and enjoy it a little bit if that's possible. Don't get me wrong, it certainly got tough, particularly towards the end, but I was probably running at about a seven or eight out of 10. There was definitely more gas in the tank if I needed it, but I really didn't want to tap into that gas too much. I've got other events just around the corner and there's only so many times in a few weeks that I can absolutely put myself in a hole. My splits fluctuated in line with the terrain, but I felt like I gave it a consistent effort throughout. Then running down the finish line, I felt the best I've ever felt in a race finish, I think. It's probably the best I'm gonna feel at a race finish all, all year because the rest of the races are gonna require me to go absolutely full gas. But crossing the line, seeing Liz, job well done. Probably loving every minute, if not smiling, is Daniel Ward. That is a good summary, we're not gnarly enough. <laughs> Underestimated so much of that. I feel like no, no amount of my triathlon experience has helped me in any way today, but I'm gonna go get a drink. Before I get into the post-race report, just gotta start washing that lube off. This is a big job. These events do not happen without people like this. This is Claire. Claire, thank you so much for your help on the day. You're far too kind, far too friendly, assisting so many competitors, particularly Alistair Brownlee, a little bit too closely. But thank you very much for your kindness, your kind words, and your support to the event. There we go then, Xterra UK, done and dusted. I should have probably got the stats ready, but I'll put the stats on screen now. Good swim, felt really comfortable in the water. I didn't get like, intimidated by having people all around me. There was quite a lot of weeds in the water. It was quite muddy. That's fine. It's one of those things swimming in the lake in the UK. I felt comfortable. All the little things we've been doing at swim training recently, using our wetsuits in the pool, doing swim around turn boys, deep water starts, that has all paid off. It might feel a bit of a waste of time when you're doing it and you're thinking, oh, I should be doing a training session. That's really helped me today. So thank you, swim coach Ash. Onto the bike. I fell off in the first mile or so, just as really slow. I like, tried to go over a log for some reason and didn't. It was technical, it was tough, it's well out of my comfort zone. As well as that, it was quite demanding physically. The, the hills were quite steep and I was on and off the bike running up some cyclocross style. And some of the flatter and faster bits, I was able to get the power down and make some places up. But if I was making places up, I was then holding people up on the single track and vice versa. So it was difficult to pace, it was difficult to stay motivated. It's actually difficult to keep pushing when you don't feel like you're really in a race. But I kept digging in and kept pushing on. Had a couple of gels and sort of kept the, kept the gas on and the bike took just over an hour and a half. I underestimated how much fatigue that would have given me because it was quite surgy. And when I got on the run, I could feel it. The run was two laps. Started off slightly uphill and I started off at a strong tempo pace and after a mile that had sort of deteriorated. It was quite technical in the forest. Running up a hill, pulling yourself up with a rope, like it was more of a like a tough mudder sort of thing than it was necessarily just a run. But I built into it, kept it controlled, but sort of like a good tempo. Yeah, and ran I think about 50 minutes or something like that for about six and a half miles. So all in all, a good day out, no major breakthroughs. I don't have any numbers from the bike, but I quite enjoyed not focusing on numbers, just riding to feel and just riding hard and uh, yeah a good day out good training day and a good good event would i do another off-road triathlon i'm not sure to be honest because i feel like i'm so out of my depth i'm never going to be in the race whereas normal triathlon i feel quite out of my depth so i'm not going to be in the race but like it's within touching distance this feels that far away so i probably would do given that there's not many in the uk but um i don't think it's something that i'll be specifically focusing on but had a good day out on the, nonetheless grateful to be in the position to be able to come and do these events physically and sort of in you know in life wise so yeah look uh, look as beer well done to anybody else who took part thank you to all the marshals and volunteers without you these events wouldn't happen so thank you very much and that is it from me